And in this video, we're gonna be talking about whether you should buy or rent. So let's begin. All right. So Mr. Buy side, what are some of the, the reasons people should buy? Well, the main reason, if you think about it, is when it comes to how your, where your money is going every time you're spending money, whether on your apartment or a condo. So on the apartment side, you're pretty much spending your money on the property management. It's money that you, it's a cost, that goes away never to return. The number one reason people buy is that they use that money to build equity. So the monthly payments they're doing on the property they purchased, it actually goes into equity instead of being lost and never to return. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. But I counter that by saying that when you buy a home, your mortgage usually the first couple of, well not the first couple of payments but first couple of years of payments you're paying more towards the interest side of the payment versus paying down the principal of the loan and in essence if you are buying a property for a short period period of time you're still kind of throwing money away paying interest so in essence if you end up moving you know in year three or four of owning your property you have essentially done the same thing as renting because you've only made payments on interest primarily. Um, you've built your credit score. You, you have done that, <laughs> but but that's kind of a uh, that's a that's a point. Like the point that you made is a is a true point, but I feel like that's more of a long term thing and not a short term thing when you're buying a home. Correct. Correct. Going back to the first point, there, there's really a part two to that point. Okay. And uh, it's, it's related to the, the value of your equity because you know, people, you, you need to look at a purchase as more of an investment and a long-term investment because you will, you will see that equity grow not only as you put more money towards it, but actually the value of it. Many people purchase uh, properties to hedge their risk against inflation and um, over time I'm sure you've heard your parents your grandparents tell you to buy versus rent uh, earlier because what they did 20 30 years ago the properties they purchased I can bet you right now they're not they're worth a lot more than what they paid for at that point okay fair enough either way you put it though you are basically locked into a certain property for a long period of time. I mean, it takes it takes a long time to complete a real estate transaction, and what if the market's not doing well? You're you're pretty much stuck with it. Uh, so that's I think that's another downside. There's options to that. Okay. So the good part about buying something in Chicago, especially near the downtown area where there's businesses, where there's demand for living, because a lot of people are moving. Uh, for work-related reasons to uh, downtown to the city the volatility isn't as negatively impacted as houses in the suburbs you mean so, like you mean like if there's a recession correct okay yeah so you know that, that investment that I'm saying is that it's uh, it's it's less volatile especially in in the city I would argue so going back to your point on uh, holding on to a property and wanting to sell it and having it for more for more than you would like, there's options. I mean, you could treat it as an investment because you could convert that into a rental property and rent it out to tenants okay. and then cover have have those mortgage uh, payments covered by your tenants. Fair. That's a fair point. But I just thought of a little problem in that scenario. What would that be? So um, there's two problems actually. The first one is, you know, managing a renter is, you know, it's hard work. I mean, if something breaks, you have to, you're the one that has to, has to call the plumber or 
you know, call the repair guy. And then the second thing is you have to look at your condo building HOA uh, policies and guidelines because uh, there are certain policies in certain buildings that uh, only allow for like 10% is allowed to be rented uh, or 20% or whatever, whatever that amount is. So it limits the ability for people to rent out uh, their condo if there are many other condos being rented in that building and it exceeds that percentage that's um, allowed in the HOA policy and guidelines. So you just have to be aware of all those things in that kind of a scenario. Correct, which, which emphasizes the importance of working with, with appropriate people involved in the condo purchase transaction. Like a real estate broker. Exactly. Oh, wow. Well, so a good real estate broker will, will understand the building, will, uh, the implications as how it relates to your ambitions or goals, and uh, and guide you through that process of what of from the selection through the negotiation through the closing of the of the condo. Okay, fair enough. I have a, another downside to buying. Man, you're full of them. Yeah, I, I'm uh, Mr. Negative Nancy here. Huh. So um, you know, a real estate purchase transaction does require a down payment. Okay, and given. The certain regulations in the banking industry, you know, down payments uh, can be anywhere between 20%. You know, you could you could probably get lower than that, and you have to talk to your mortgage professional about that. But you know, that takes a lot of uh, liquidity out of your uh, personal uh, balance sheet. And you know, what if you have to sell stocks that you're losing money on in order to buy this home? Or you know, what if you want to have a cash pile for a rainy day and you don't want a big down payment on a $400,000 property, you know, a 20% down payment's 80 grand. So I know you like how I did the math in my head there. Um, that was quick. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, it does take a chunk out of your, your personal liquidity. Uh, yeah. and you know, that's, that is, I think kind of a downside. It, it is, but going back every, Every transaction is unique. Every person's situation is unique. Every person's goals and ambitions is unique. So you're not going to buy something that's going to put a serious dent into your bank account. Professionals, licensed professionals, guide you through what you can and cannot do. And they also, a good professionals, will highlight any risks involved, anything that you, 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 you need to consider before signing those papers. Now, we, we put in a lot of time to make these videos, so we hope you enjoy them. If you do, please give us a thumbs up uh, and follow us on Facebook or on YouTube. You can subscribe to us. Or if you are looking to make a real estate transaction, whether uh, you're renting, buying, or if you're relocating out of Chicago, Arson, what should you do? Give us a call. Give yeah. us a call. There's no charge. There's no broker fee involved for buyers or tenants. Yeah. Or do we do email too? We, can they can they send us an email or a fax? They could give us a fax. Yeah. And do we have a pager? No. Uh, actually, I I got rid of my pager a week ago. I found out no one's using it these days, so we're upgrading. Yeah, we're upgrading our technology. So you can take us down, we work hard and we sacrifice But if you step in our way, we leave you paralyzed Oh, para paralyzed, yeah, it's the samurai We take you down, down, if you wanna come and fight That's alright, if you wanna come and fight with the samurai You will find yourself in your gown And mentally just being paralyzed Mentally being a paralyzed